Why should we trust you? Um, you shouldn't. No one person should be trusted here. The board can fire me. I think that's important. Definitely one of the confusing parts of this technology is just the, the overall power. It's a script even Hollywood would die to write. A superstar CEO on one side, a disgruntled board on the other, caught in the middle with 770 employees and the future of artificial intelligence. Not just the AI industry, but the entire business world was left shocked when Sam Altman, the creator of ChatGPT, was fired by OpenAI's board. Stay tuned as we delve into the details of the drama that unfolded in OpenAI. It is indeed true that the sudden firing of Sam Altman by opening as board has shocked the artificial intelligence industry. It also shows how conflicts arise suddenly in the lucrative AI sector. On the one end is a group that is very much buttered about the disruptive potential of AI, while on the other hand is a market-oriented faction that looks to accelerate innovation. And there is a sudden fiasco going on in Microsoft, the technology giant company that has invested billions of dollars in opening AI. The world was startled by the sudden firing and rehiring of Sam Altman. Sam Altman's dismissal and rapid reinstatement as opening AI CEO just set a wrong example to the world of the future of AI, which is more focused on the speed and profits at the expense of everything else. So, don't you think that humanity is endangered by this elite group behind AI that has a huge vision for technological advancement? Most of us are just unaware of what the future lies for humanity, considering the consequences that will arise with AI adoption. So, let's get back to how it all started for OpenAI. The creators of OpenAI claim to be coming up with humanitarian organizations that will support philanthropic causes in order to benefit humanity or at least protect humans from possible challenges in the long run. OpenAI is clearly a non-profit organization, and it consists of a small board that includes academics and experts. However, back then, there were no investors. There are no full details anywhere explaining what exactly happened in 17 November 2023 and what triggered the board to fire Altman. The most likely interpretation that people are aware of so far is that the members of this board were bothered by Sam Altman's commercial importance and the headlong rush to design new and powerful models of generative artificial intelligence. It is quite motivating that there are still people in the Silicon Valley who bother about barriers as digital technology has already done enough damage to employment, salaries, and even democracy. For example, the digital technology industry has introduced the world to Facebook and social media, which had been utilized to spread hatred only in the name of engagement and digital advertisement. As for reports, Sam Altman was forced by the opening eyed board to resign as a condition of his return to the organization. The new board, headed by former Salesforce co CEO Brad Taylor, has more potential to be sympathetic to opening eye scaling up as quickly as possible, irrespective of the consequences. No wonder that the root cause of this carelessness is a profit motive, equipped with venture capital, even if this leads to bigger financial troubles and massive societal costs. It looks like the tech industry is only interested in disruptions and uncontrolled growth. We already know how Sam Altman was one of its most committed and loyal preachers. Venture capital has made this way of operating quite famous. But as we know, OpenAI doesn't depend on traditional venture capital, considering Microsoft has already dedicated $10 billion to the firm. When the Altman crisis shook the company, top Microsoft executives were least bothered as their only focus was on their goals, which were recruited talent promised them huge money to spend it, and then press the pedal to the metal. Social responsibility and even what happens to the people within an organization is the last thing that would come to their mind. Sam Altman himself belonged to the same mentality as during his startup accelerated Y Combinator. He had asked applicants, please tell us about the time you, applicant name, most successfully hacked some non-computer system to your advantage. Silicon Valley leaders believe in a philosophy of move fast and break things, the internal Facebook motto at one point, or as Shira Frankel and Cecilia Kang documented in her book on Facebook, an ugly truth, book it, snip it. The extraordinary drama that happened at OpenAI definitely filled news feeds and even sent the message to society that no one damn cares about you in your corporate world or let's put it in the AI world. The key reason for the drama to happen in OpenAI is due to its structure. OpenAI has a bizarre corporate governance framework. The board of directors has control over a nonprofit called OpenAI. The nonprofit made a limited for profit subsidiary, OpenAI GP LLC. The main owner of the for profit is OpenAI Global LLC, which is another for profit firm. The nonprofit works for the benefit of the globe with a for profit division. It looks like a genuine approach, considering AI's tech big and disrupted strength. However, it creates many weird governance problems which includes the nonprofit board controlling everything and having no responsibility to maximize profits. So, what could have gone wrong really? Well, Altman and the board would know the facts more than what is written and released on the internet. Moving forward, marketers should raise their awareness of the companies behind the generative AI tools that they utilize or are planning to use. Firstly, 
Know the providers of generative AI software and services that are taking care of governance and safety. It is quite obvious that Microsoft, Google, and Profic and other companies won't have their internal issues displayed in the public domain. However, topics like safety management over profit still remains a big topic for them. That's why, as a marketeer or simply an AI user, you need to be aware of how these companies approach these sensitive topics and come up with licensing their solutions. Secondly, understand that the productive use of generative AI is a content strategy and governance problem, not a technology issue. If you don't come up with solutions with regards to the governance and cross-function uses of the generative AI that you, as a marketeer or user, buy, then you will definitely run into bigger cross-function usage problems in the long run. There is still no denying the fact that the size and scale of OpenAI going through the self-destruction is too hard to imagine. But the problem may disappear tomorrow or even bounce back stronger the next time because of their recent debacle. The for-profit one in the OpenAI case and thousands of generative AI startups breathe a sigh of the relief. But they also realize the fragility of their software, considering it depends on OpenAI's existence. Imagine what would really transpire if the OpenAI board won their fight and, in the name of safety, just remove any paid access to the API or the skills to develop business models on the top of it. So, going forward, users of generative AI can really ask about the potential issues that they might have to work in if they acquire any of the latest generative AI software. It is indeed true that many marketeers were fed up with the corporate soap operas and the huge media coverage of OpenAI's drama because they found them to be irrelevant to work in the present age. No doubt that marketers and users of OpenAI are half right, but looking at the feature of artificial intelligence startup, there are only doubts that remain fresh in people's mind. Sam Altman has apologized after returning as CEO that he didn't interpret the views of some board members in the conversations he had when he was lobbying for the removal of a director. The board, however, always declined to dig deeper into its own reasoning and cited an ongoing independent investigation. But people familiar with the board's thinking said that the director's move didn't come all of the sudden but after several months spent on understanding Sam Altman's strategic maneuvering and a perceived lack of transparency in his communications with the director. In a testament, an open-eye sportsperson told Bloomberg News, We look forward to finding the board's independent review. Our primary focus remains on developing and releasing useful and safe AI and supporting the new board as they work to make improvements to our governance structure. Recently, OpenAI's chairman said that two lawyers from Wilmer Hale would be managing the review. OpenAI to not associate with Altman further was discussed back in the fall by the board members as per one person. The group at that time included Altman, President Greg Brockman, and the four people who would ultimately dismiss him as CEO. OpenAI chief scientist Ilya Suskiver, Quora Incorporation CEO Adam D'Angelo, AI academic Helen Tulner, and entrepreneur Tasha McCauley blamed the company for having an unconventional structure as the unpaid nonprofit board overseeing the artificial intelligence startup Juggernaut. In a testament, a spokesperson for the company emphasized that the aftermath of Altman's firing, OpenAI senior leadership team unanimously asked for Altman to come back as CEO and for the board to resign. The strong support for his team underscores that he is effective CEO who is open to different points of view, willing to solve complex challenges and demonstrate care for his team. The statement said, in the aftermath of Altman's firing and rehiring, both Toner and Macaulay have resigned from their job. The only member remaining of the volunteer board that existed before November 17 is Cora D'Angelo. So, it is evident that the company still has a chaotic leadership battle. If you like watching our video, like and subscribe to our channel. Your thoughts are welcome in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and until we meet again, bye!